What's going on guys? My name is Ryan Snod at Rhymes with Odd and welcome to another video. This week we're gonna be talking about how to become a real estate videographer. I've had a lot of questions coming in on social media about how I got into this industry and I wanted to share some of my insights and some tips and tricks for you guys to do the exact same thing. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the gear that you need to start, how to grow and build your portfolio, marketing strategies on how to actually land these gigs and how to have retainers through these clients so you can have ongoing income as you go on. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video and everything will be covered in great detail. So let's go. Real estate has always been known for having great photos that sell a home, but as time's going on here, video is starting to kind of be the new trend and a new way that realtors and sellers can sell their properties more quickly. So let's get right into the tips. Before you start, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have the proper gear to shoot the home. You don't have to drop a ton of money on this type of a purchase. I shoot on an A6300 and that's right around $600. And if you buy it used, it's a little bit cheaper than that. So as long as it shoots 4K and or 60 frames a second, you're gonna be good to go. The reason I say having 60 frames per second is so you can shoot things in slow motion and slow it down in post and give it kind of that dreamy feel. Now, after you have your camera picked out, make sure that you have a very good lens that fits the bill for this. When you're shooting real estate, you wanna have a very wide angle lens, but if you go a little bit too wide and the lines start bending a little bit and you get that fisheye look, it does make it look tacky. So the ideal focal length for you when shooting real estate videos is gonna be 12 millimeters. If you can have a lens that does exactly 12 millimeters, that is the perfect lens for real estate videography. I've seen a couple different lenses, but the one that is most popular is the Laowa 12 millimeter fixed lens. Um, and if you go any tighter than a 20 millimeter, it's going to look too zoomed in and you're not gonna get the full effect of what the rooms look like. The entire purpose of doing real estate videography is to show the rooms and make them look as big as possible. Hug the walls, go slow, and you'll be fine. Now, after you have the proper camera and lens, you're gonna to wanna to look at a way to stabilize your footage as much as possible. Best tools for this is going to be either a gimbal or a slider. Real estate videography is very well known for using sliders, but I typically use a gimbal just because it's a very versatile piece of equipment and there's not as much setup or teardown with a gimbal as there is with a slider. Both have the great desired effect that you want with nice, smooth, slow motion to kind of give it just a little bit of camera movement so it's not stuck in one place, but it's also not zipping around the house so you don't even know what the house looks like. I've been seeing a lot of real estate edits here recently that look really cool and they have really cool cuts and transitions, but they don't really illustrate what the house looks like. And it doesn't accomplish the core purpose of the video, which is to showcase the home, showcase the features and the benefits and give somebody a great insight on what the house looks like and encourage them to come in and actually have a real tour and or buy the place. And if you're gonna be shooting for these high-end homes, which we're gonna talk about in a second, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a drone that you can use because realtors and sellers expect that type of level of quality when they are going to hire someone to shoot a video for them. I shoot all of my aerial stuff on a DJI Phantom 3 Pro. It shoots 4K as well as slow motion, but the major detriment that it has is the lack of obstacle avoidance. And if you're shooting people's homes, you wanna make sure that you're very safe and careful. And if your drone gets picked up in the wind or something, the last thing you wanna do is smash your drone into somebody's house they're trying to sell. Make sure that you have obstacle avoidance. And then of course, make sure that you have your part 107 license so you can fly legally here in the US. And if you have questions about any of the stuff that I just mentioned, I'll make sure to put links to my full kit in the description box below so you can check that out and see what I use to shoot my real estate videos. Now that you have all the proper gear, the next step that you need is to grow and start building your portfolio in this industry. When you try to go solicit new businesses, they wanna see what you've done. They don't wanna hear about it, but they wanna see it. So having a portfolio in place is gonna be essential for you to start landing more gigs. Now, if you can't land a paying gig right out of the gate, that's completely okay. I would say follow the freemium method, which I've coined, which is shooting a video for free in exchange to build your portfolio. So if you do a really great job with this first free video and you give it to the realtor and they turn around and sell the home in the next week using your video, they're going to be very keen on actually hiring you for the next one and using you in the future when they're trying to market these homes. When you're looking for these homes, I would definitely recommend looking for the higher end homes. Try and shoot for homes that are $750,000 and above in the price range. So after doing this a couple different times when you have three or four different homes, that's when you can build a real estate reel. I said real a lot just then. Real recognizes real. Real recognizes real. 
estate. Now you want to start using this portfolio to market yourself in your local area. The best strategy that I've found to solicit new businesses is to go onto Zillow.com and look up the higher end real estate in the area. Like I'd mentioned, put your price range at $750,000 and above and start looking in your local area to see what's on the market. So what I would do is start a Google spreadsheet and copy and paste the different links to which homes that are the higher end ones as well as the sellers and so you get a list of about 20. Then once you have that list of 20, you wanna go in and email them and say, hey, my name is Ryan, I'm a videographer. I'd really be interested in shooting a real estate video for your firm. Here's a sample of the portfolio that I have so far and things that I've done in the past. Another great selling point of doing real estate videography for these high-end homes is that a lot of times, the people that are buying them do not live locally in that area. So the only way that these people are going to find them and or come in and buy the home if they live out of state is seeing really great quality photography on the website, or they have a really great real estate video that helps sell them on the property so they can come take a tour and or buy the place. So knowing those two things, that's what you wanna try and push forward to when you try and market yourselves to these real estate agents, is telling them that you understand the struggle, that you wanna help them push the properties more, and that you are the person to help them do just that. Another reason that you'd wanna shoot for those higher end homes is because the higher end homes have a lot more commission on the line for the seller or the real estate agent. So instead of having a couple thousand dollars that they're going to make from selling this home, if it's a multi-million dollar home, they have tens of thousands of dollars that they have on the line for commission, and they're kind of watering at the mouth trying to sell that property as quickly as possible so they can make that commission as quickly as possible. Also knowing that, you know that if they have over $10,000 worth of commission on the line, they're probably going to be willing to spend a couple hundred bucks to a couple thousand dollars depending on the size of the property to help sell it. And in terms of an ROI for them, if they invest $1,000 in a video that you make for them and they turn around and sell the property for a $10,000 commission, they just got a 10 to one ROI on their investment, which is super worth it in a lot of people's minds. And somebody would be much more willing to talk to you if you can get them that type of ROI with a video like this. So all things considered, really think about what the real estate agent is looking for and what the seller can benefit from you making a video and make sure you put that in your initial email when you reach out to them. Once you build a relationship with a real estate agent and you start doing more and more videos with them, that's when you wanna look into building a retainer agreement with this type of person. Once you get a retainer agreement with a real estate agent, it becomes much more easy to have constant cash flow for yourself and your business. Because once you start shooting more and more videos, sometimes those things fall off. But if a real estate agent has a constant need or they have a couple different homes that they'd like you to shoot every single month, it makes sense to put a retainer in place so you have a constant flow of income and they can count on you a certain amount of time throughout the month. So just imagine if you were to charge $1,000 per real estate tour video and the real estate agent might not hire you for every single house. But if you had an agreement in place where it's you know three or $4,000 a month and you'll shoot uh, five different real estate videos throughout the month, it fits into their monthly budget as well as guarantees that they have constant content coming out of their business every single month to help sell these homes. It's great for the business owner because they can shoot more properties and sell them more fast. <laughs> That's not even a phrase, more fast. It's great for the sellers because they have more content to push out and help sell their properties faster. It saves them more money per video because then they have an agreement in place where they're not spending you know, $1,000 every single video. And it's also great for you because you have a guaranteed income every single month so you can get multiple retainers of different agents and completely run your business based on the real estate industry. And imagine if you dabble in some different industry work in between those home videos, like a wedding or a corporate gig or a brand video or something like that, and you're already making tens of thousands of dollars per month just shooting real estate videos. As you can see, this can snowball out of control. If you understand how to build retainers, make sure that they're profitable for you and realistic. Um, but that's kind of the framework that I would follow, honestly, if I were starting a freelance videography business solely focused on making real estate videos. Some problems you might wanna note before you go out, buy all the gear and start trying to solicit some different businesses. The first thing is that you really wanna target those higher end homes. Anything below $750,000, I found that the budgets are very, very small and there's not a lot of work out there that people are willing to pay for. An example is that I've had a half a million dollar home that I thought was a higher end property that the real estate agent uh, kind of looked at me funny when I said my price that was over a thousand dollars for that home. And she told me exactly what I'm telling you, that the commission was not high enough to justify spending that type of money on some marketing. If you're first getting out in the industry and that's the only properties you can find, just know that the price points will be lower than normal if you're going for those lower level homes, which is not a bad thing though. If you're trying to shoot for those smaller level homes when you're first starting out, 
I would recommend going out and batch shooting them throughout the day. So take an entire day and go out and shoot five or six different properties and try and make sure that you just shoot more volume rather than one big home, but shoot the smaller ones and pump out the videos as fast as you can to try and get some good portfolio built up for yourself. Another downside is that a lot of these real estate agents want it fast, they want it very well done, and they want it cheap, which are the three aspects of a video that you have to try and find some common ground on. Most of the time they can have one or two of those aspects, but not all three. So you have to try and educate your clients as you start to do this and say, hey, you know, I'm not gonna be able to do these in a one day turnaround, but I'm gonna try and do them as fast as I possibly can. If you want me to turn them around faster, they will cost more money and kind of have that conversation early on with your real estate agents so they don't start taking advantage of your time or expect you're on call 24 seven to come shoot a home for them. Now, if you wanna see a behind the scenes of a real estate video that I shot personally, make sure to click above in the card here and check that video out. A lot of people have said that's really helpful for them to see kind of a hands-on uh, virtual job shadow to see exactly how somebody else shoots them before they go in and start shooting real estate. Now, if you have any other questions about how I reach out to realtors, what I say, or the gear that I use to shoot my videos, make sure to drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll make sure I get back to you as quickly as I can. This training about real estate videos is a piece of a online course that I created called Solo Video Pro. Solo Video Pro is an online course to teach you the business skills that you need to start and grow your own profitable freelance video business. It is condensed down from all the business knowledge that I've learned in the last five years on how to run your business completely by yourself, land more gigs, market to people, tips on selling, how to solicit new business and actually solve their problems, how to get more retainer agreements and how to grow your business to make a substantial income for yourself. So if you're interested in Solo Video Pro, make sure to go check it out at solovideopro.com and join and become a member because it is a great resource for you as you continue on in this process to become a better videographer and a better business owner. All right, that about does it for me guys. My name is Ryan Snod, helping you grow your brand with video. Make sure to subscribe for more weekly videos just like this, and I cannot wait to see you guys next week. Peace!